want to welcome you to the International Wheat Genome Sequencing Consortium's uh, webinar today. We have the pleasure of having Yajun Wang, who is here from KAUST, as well as Guate uh, Yu, who is also from KAUST. And, uh, but before we get started, I'm going to give you kind of a quick overview of the IWGSC. So the International Wheat Genome Sequencing Consortium is uh, works with 72 companies or countries. Sorry about that. We have 3,400 members, and um, there are almost over 900 institutes and and companies that. Uh, are involved with us in some way. We have nine sponsors, and these sponsors make it possible for us to do our work, plus they also make it possible for us to do webinars like this and to coordinate research activities and develop genomic resources. So our vision uh, post the uh, release of the reference sequence in 28, or the publication in 2018, the release in 2016, um, our vision is to enhance breeding through an increased understanding of the molecular basis of traits and their allelic diversity, which is exactly what we're going to be talking about today, looking at specific traits. So this is just to the, remind you that the webinar is recorded and will be posted on the IWGSC YouTube channel later today. Uh, the presentation uh, part will be followed by a Q&A. Uh, so please, throughout the uh, presentations today, you can submit your questions in the Q&A panel, and we will uh, address them at the end of the session. Please monitor the chat panel so that you can see messages that may include where to, uh, you know, the latest articles or uh, the handouts, etc. So you should be able to download uh, the handouts. Um, they should be on the uh, download handouts uh, link. So you should be able to get both the present, my presentation as well as that of our presenters. So today we're going to be talking about uh, wheat genomics facilitating the discovery of kinase fusion proteins as major, major players in rust resistance. And we're very happy to have two presenters from KAUST University, from the University, I guess it's King Abdullah University of Science and Technology. Um, so, and I just want to remind everyone, so our next uh, presentation will be in December and you can go ahead and sign up for that. So I want to thank you for your participation. And at this time, I will turn it over to Yajun Wang who will lead off on our presentation. Thank you very much uh, for the introductions. And I also would like to take this opportunity to thank the organizers, uh, Rolanda and Isabel, uh, for their efforts in organizing this. Uh, today, we are going to talk about the disease resistance. Uh, unlike the fundamental activities, which are usually controlled by conserved genes, disease resistance is kind of a optional function for plants. Uh, therefore, disease-resistant genes are usually diversified, and the, res and the resistance is usually controlled by present uh, or absent or the, cap or the cap copy number variations of these uh, disease-resistant genes. So, to clone these this genes, it is vitally important to generate a reference sequence for the resistant donors. So here we will present you examples of how we use the genomic, genomic technologies to assist in gene cloning and more. Uh, as we all know, the uh, world population is uh, uh, increasing and demanding more food. However, every year uh, about 6 million tons of grain account for 6% of global wheat productions are lost to this devastating rust disease, including leaf rust, uh, soup rust and stem rust. It's, it has been calculated that the lo this lost uh, grain can be used to bake uh, 83 billion uh, loaves of the bread and which can be used to feed uh, a population of 230, 
30 million people for one year. Uh, <clears throat> as this rust disease occurs late during the wheat growth season, which means a lot of energies and resources has been spent on this uh, infected plant. Uh, so besides the green loss, loss, uh, it has been also uh, it has been calculated that uh, about 120 billion kilowatt hours of energies has been lost uh, to rust disease every year, and this energies could have been used to provide electricity to 12 to 112 million households for over one year. And using resistant genes and breeding resistant cultivars are the most economical and the environmental friendly ways to fight against this uh, uh, rust disease. However, uh, the mapping and cloning disease resistant genes from wheat is still challenging. Wheat has a, a 16 GB uh, genome, and most of, uh, and eight, more than 80% of them uh, are repetitive sequence. So the huge and the repetitive wheat genomes makes the uh, traditional map-based cloning uh, in weight extremely difficult, which usually take more than three to five years to just clone one gene. Uh, and uh, the efficiency is highly depend, uh, dependent on the recombinant, recombination rate in the target region. Uh, uh, so far, there are 450 disease-resistant genes in bright weight gene pool. Uh, and more than uh, and uh, most of, more, most of them haven't been cloned yet, and more than um, forty percent of these disease resistant genes uh, uh, were introgressed from uh, cultivated uh, or uh, wild relatives of bread wheat. Uh, the cloning of these genes located on this aiding introgressions has been even more difficult uh, because of the lack of uh, recombinations. Uh, in a pioneer experiment conducted by uh, Dr. Sears uh, uh, in 1950s, uh, a chromosome segment that contains wheat leaf rust R9 uh, was introgressed into bread weeds uh, from this uh, wild grass uh, instead of uh, Umberlata. Uh, through this interspace uh, process and the uh, actually uh, mediated chromosome break and relocation. Uh, uh, such kind of uh, non-homology chromosome translocation would surprise the recombination uh, completely, which means uh, it's almost impossible to clone this R9 using the traditional map-based cloning. Uh, to address the challenges uh, uh, of gene cloning in, from weight, uh, we have uh, taken R9 as an example uh, and developed the mutant associate which allows uh, the rapid gene cloning uh, without genetic mapping, or we can say completely non-rely on re recombinations. Uh, so we first applied uh, EMS mutagenesis uh, for such an R9, and then we look for a susceptible mutant, uh, if rust susceptible mutant. Uh, although wheat has a, a huge and repetitive genome, uh, its transcriptome is much smaller and there's not much big difference from the other plant species. So we first uh, sequ sequenced uh, the transcriptome of uh, well-type well plants using pipe barrel associate uh, and generated uh, the four lungs transcript uh, libraries, which were used uh, as a reference. And then we sequenced uh, the, the mutant uh, using Illumina INSEQ, and then we mapped the uh, Illumina reads of individual mutant to this reference and looked for the transcript that carries SNPs uh, for all sequenced mutants. In this case, the transcript 2 uh, is our candidate. Uh, in our real case, uh, we have found 17 uh, leaf rods uh, susceptible mutant, and 10 of them were used for Illumina sequencing. Uh, after data analysis, we found only one transcript that carry uh, EMS, mute, EMS uh, induced uh, SNPs for all 10 sequenced mutants. Uh, and we also found when there were four to five mutants, uh, the, the noise from data analysis uh, is quite low. Uh, which, which means uh, uh, the mutant associate 
allows uh, uh, gene cloning uh, using minimum of four to five mutants. Uh, the candidate transcript uh, includes uh, a tandem kinase with a C-terminal uh, VWA domain. Uh, to further confirm uh, whether this uh, candidate transcript is indeed transcribed uh, from R9, uh, we knocked down the expression level of this candidate transcript uh, in two different uh, uh, weight genetic backgrounds using various induced gene silencing. And here you can see both cases have resulted in uh, susceptibility to weight B thrust uh, uh, indicated the tandem kinase uh, fusion gene is R9. Uh, the tandem, tandem kinase has been uh, emerged as a new, uh, as a new uh, regulator in treaty immunity. Uh, so, so far, uh, nine of such uh, tandem kinase have been cloned and they confer resistance to different pathogens, while only R9 and the PM57 uh, that has a, a third fused VWA domain. Uh, they are also local genes uh, uh, from different easy uh, species, uh, but they come for resistance to different pathogens, like Ifrost and polyumidu. Uh, to further study this new type of uh, tandem kinase uh, fusion protein, uh, we, we applied large scale mutagenesis and, and mutant screening uh, from more than 8,000 M2 families. We found uh, 121 susceptible mutants, among which uh, 120 were, were found to carry homozygous uh, SNPs in R9. This has resulted in 67 non-redundant amino acid substitutions. Uh, we have observed the uh, marked difference uh, in the effect of these amino acid substitutions between the two kinase domain. Uh, first, uh, uh, we we found there are more uh, there there are more uh, amino acid substitutions in kinase one than in kinase two, uh, which is 48 with uh, uh, 13. And also we found uh, uh, kinase one has more uh, surface localized uh, amino acid substitu substitutions, uh, while the kinase two has more internal ones. It is uh, known that the surface amino acids uh, are usually involved in protein uh, function, uh, such as kinase activity. Uh, ho uh, however, the internal ones uh, are, are usually uh, involved in um, protein structure and uh, pro uh, protein structure and stability. Uh, thus, uh, uh, thus, we think uh, the the uh, kinase 1 is a functional kinase that has a kinase activity, while kinase 2 could be a pseudo kinase. And all five, uh, uh, all five amino acid substitutions in VWA domain, a surface localized indicated in the VWA domain, could be involved uh, in protein-protein interactions. Uh, evolution analysis shows that uh, there's a, a, a single kinase uh, VWA protein family that is widely distributed in grass species. Well, this tandem kinase VWA protein, like R9, uh, was only founded in, in, uh, in species that's close related um, to bread weight. Uh, so we can conclude that uh, this single kinase VWA uh, uh, genes, uh, proteins occurred much earlier than this uh, tandem kinase VWA proteins. Um, based on our funding and uh, previous research and opinions, we propose this integrated decoy model uh, that this single kinase VWA protein uh, could be the uh, could be the component of, of plant basic immunity, uh, just like the big one and big one. Uh, uh, kinase, kinases in Arabidopsis immune pathway. Uh, it has been proved that such kinases, kinases can be the target uh, of the pathogen effector. For example, uh, rust uh, could may, may secrete this effector to bind this single kinase VWA uh, to surprise the plant basal immune immunity and promote the rust infection. Uh, uh, however, plant uh, plant can 
involve this uh, tandem kinase uh, VWA protein by gain a second kinase domain. And then the original kinase uh, VWA domain become a decoy that is uh, responsible for perception of uh, rust effectors. And, uh, and, the, and the new kinase domain is responsible for uh, conducting uh, the first signals. Uh, uh, for example, the R9 and the PM57, uh, they are also local proteins that are comfort resistant to leaf rust and polymodule respectively. Uh, from the, their protein sequence alignment, we can see they have uh, conserved uh, kinase 1 domain, uh, but uh, diverts the uh, kinase 2 and the VW domain. Uh, so uh, it is likely that uh, uh, the, kinase, the kinase 2 and the VW domain of uh, R9 and the PM57 could be the decoys that is responsible for to sense uh, effectors from uh, leaf rust and polyamidu, uh, while the kinase uh, one domain is responsible for conducting the defense signals. Uh, the R9 translocation is uh, historically important as it is like it is uh, uh, the first disease resistant genes that was uh, introduced into bread weight uh, using irradiation. Uh, to assemble this uh, R9 translocation, we construct uh, the pack bio assemblies of uh, 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 with line such as R9 and R9 putative Egilop Umberlata donor, the T line TA 1851. Uh, from here, you can see uh, such, a, uh, such R9 has a, a total length of 14.49 gigabase uh, sequence with N50 of 4.52 MB. Uh, well, the ETL of Umbarlata deployed the ETL of Umbarlata has a, a 4.22 gigabits with the N50 F11 MB. And recently, we have uh, generated the, uh, the chromosome level assembly of ETL of Umbarlata, uh, uh, which can be assessed uh, in this link. Uh, uh, to find the to find to find the easy of uh from some introgressions from this uh, such R9, we first uh, um, we first uh, extracted uh, this uh, um, uh, 2.7 billion 51 base pair cameras uh, from this uh, easy of umbrella context, and then we map these cameras to such R9 context, and and we found the 13 uh, such R9 contacts that with higher high camera mapping coverage. Uh, from here, it, here is a, a heat map of this camera mapping. Uh, uh, blue to uh, yellow color represent, represent the camera mapping values from low to high. Uh, so these 13 uh, such R9 contacts uh, are corresponding to five uh, easy of invariant contacts. Which has been ordered and oriented by a published uh, easy of Umberlata uh, genetic map. Uh, and we were able to nail the, uh, uh, the big point of uh, introgression to a base pair level. Uh, here you can see the, uh, it, this has a, a bread weight uh, NRR gene on the left. and. Uh, the easy of invariant transposon element on the left, on the right, uh, and we uh, we have uh, found that a uh, uh, 28 MB of uh, easy of invariant uh, uh, chromosome fragment has been trans has been uh, transferred to uh, weight uh, chromosome 6B uh, through this. Uh, uh, actually, made it a uh, constant um, um, break and uh, re relaxation. And we also found there are uh, a 5.58 MB uh, of uh, width uh, chromosome segment have been lost it from the 6B chromosome. Uh, it, it was reported that uh, uh, R9 translocation uh, was is associated with uh, a reduced uh, yield. Uh, so. This could be uh, caused either by undesirable genes uh, from this uh, in, uh, in introgression or um, uh, 
all by this uh, loss of 5.58 MB with Kumsons segment. Yeah. Uh, to summarize uh, our work, uh, so we have developed the mutant associate, which allows uh, the rapid cloning uh, of R9 without uh, uh, genetic mapping. Uh, and also the large scale mutagenesis um, and protein modeling in, in, in about the protein domain functional interpretations. Uh, and also we use the long read sequencing which helped to reconstruct the historical uh, R9 translocation. Uh, I would like to uh, thank our amazing team that's uh, uh, led, led it by uh, uh, Simon Kreidinger and also our cooperators uh, uh, from uh, Kansas State University and the uh, Tech Republic. Uh, yeah. And some additional information. Uh, in next month, I will move. I will move uh, from this beautiful coast to a center of, uh, for excellent molecular in molecular form science of the uh, uh, Chinese Academy of Science. So there, I will establish my own group, and uh, and I will continue to work with the communities um, to figure out the puzzle of a uh, serial uh, immunity. And uh, and uh, we, I'm recruiting uh, assistant researchers, postdocs, and the technicians. Feel free to contact me from these emails. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Yajun. And now we'll have Guatai. Hello, everyone. Um, first of all, I want to thank uh, uh, Kelly for his uh, kind introduction. And I also would like to thank Rolando for coordinating this. Um, session and uh, I also would like to thank IWGS uh, for giving me this opportunity to talk about uh, my recent project uh, on stem rust resistance in SR43. Stem rust uh, is uh, one of most important disease in wheat worldwide and uh, this disease was caused by a fungal uh, pathogen Paxinia graminis triticae. In some extreme epidemics, it can cause severe lodging and uh, yield losses. Uh, stem rust uh, was under control for many years until end of the 20th century. Uh, this is a partial world production, wheat production map, and the wheat production is concentrated uh, in dark green area. In 1999, there was a stem rust outbreak in Uganda. Uh, this stem rust outbreak was caused by TTKSK, commonly known as UG99. And uh, soon, the UG99 and its lineage spread north to uh, Ethiopia, Yemen, and Iran, south to the uh, South Africa. In 2012, uh, another outbreak occurred in Ethiopia. This uh, outbreak was caused by uh, TKTTF. The following year, the TKTTF was found in the United Kingdom, Germany, Denmark, and Sweden. So while uh, stem rust pathogen spread widely, it also evolves rapidly. So far, there are more than, uh, more than 10 uh, different new uh, races have been identified in Africa. And after the stem rust resistant SR31 was defeated uh, by TTKSK or UG99 in 1999, um, three major stem rust resistant SR24, SR36, and SRTPM. P uh, were also overcome by TTKST, TTTSK, and uh, TKTTF, uh, respectively. General goal in our lab is to clone um, multiple stem rust resist genes and uh, put them into a cassette, then transform the cassette into uh, wheat. And in principle, uh, it allows to develop 
new wheat variety with uh, broader spectrum and more durable resistance to stem rust. ASR43 was introduced from wild wheat cyanopyrin elongaton uh, more than 40 years ago. The elongaton chromon segment was shortened from 80% of the seven uh, chromon 7D to 10% of seven chromosome, uh, 7 7D. So we thought that this is a good material to clone stem rust uh, is gene SR43 with uh, mute chromosic. Mute chromosic uh, was developed by Sanchez Martin in uh, 2016, and uh, it considers three major steps. The first step is develop systemic mutant from a resistant line uh, using EMS mutagenesis. The second step is to isolate chromosome DNA uh, using chromosome flow sorting. And the third step is to sequence the isolated DNA sample of the systemic mutant and uh, the wild type, then perform bioinformatic analysis to identify candidates. So we mutagenized uh, 2,700 SR43 integration state with uh, 0.8 EMS, and we screened more than 1,800 M2 families with PTG lays TPMKC, and uh, we verified 11 susceptible mutants with GBS, and we chose eight mutants for the chromosome flow sorting. This figure shows the uh, um, chromosome flow sorting window in red uh, rectangle, and the target chromosome is 7D. So we sequence the uh, uh, isolated DNA sample of the uh, cell mutant and the wild type. We made a sample for the wild type, and we map the reads of the cell mutant to the sample of the wild type, and we identify a scaffold window about, which about 10 kb uh, containing mutation across all eight mutants. So we kind of have a uh, candidate for the SR43. So we performed the iron seek and iron mapping here. Uh, figure A is showing the iron mapping. And we identified four uh, different splices. The translation of splice one contain mutation across eight mutants. And the translation of the splice two contain uh, mutation across seven mutants. Con uh, the translation of the splice three contains mutation across five mutants. And uh, the translation of the splice four contains a mutation across six mutants. So the splice one uh, is considered to be functional one. So based on this annotation, we um, generate three parts uh, for the SR43 construct uh, using long range PCR. Then we ligate three parts into PGG uh, vector. Uh, and the construct contains 3.3 kb of the promoter region and 7.8 kb uh, CDS region and 2.5 kb terminator region. So we uh, transformed SR43 with this construct into field. We got one transgenics. Then we uh, test the transgenics along with field transgenic now and uh, SR43 integration line. And you can see here, uh, field and SR43 now are susceptible to all four isolates and SR43 transgenics and SR43 integration line are resistant to four isolates. Next, we want to check the uh, risk specificity. As you can see, SR43 uh, transgenics and SR43 uh, integration line are resistant to 14GO189 uh, isolate, and but they're susceptible to isolate 75 and D717C. So um, the SR43 transgenics has the same risk specific to uh, as, as SR43 integration line. And uh, figure B indicates the um, temperature sensitivities. SR43 transgenics and SR43 integration line 
uh, resistant to isolate 89MN399 at 21 Celsius, but they are susceptible at 26 Celsius. So this indicates SR43 transgenics has the same um, temperature sensitivity uh, as SR43 integration line. So um, the risk specificity and uh, temperature sensitivity between SR43 transgenics and SR43 integration line um, confirm that we have cloned SR43. This table shows uh, 11 uh, isolates we used to test uh, SR43 transgenics. Geographically, they are from uh, USA, Ethiopia, Kenya, Israel, France, Italy, United Kingdom, and Georgia. And the transgenics is resistant to 10 out of 11 isolate. So SR43 has broad spectrum efficacy. This figure shows the origin and the distribution of SR43 both lungs. Um, in here, kinase in green, uh, DUF3475 in orange, DUF668 in blue. The two DUFs uh, exist in maize, um, sorghum, rice, black podium, and the barley. The SR43 gene present in uh, rye. So um, the two DUFs include kinase domain and form SR43 uh, for 6.7 to 11.6 million score. The SR43 or its oslot uh, pre are present in rye and bee genome, wheat bee genome, and the genome closely related to the wheat genome, but not present in uh, wheat A genome or wheat D genome. Uh, we performed the SR43 protein localization experiment um, in Bentamiana, SR43, GFP, and uh, plastic uh, marker, PLS, P2A, RFP, co-localized in the plastic. And in uh, wheat protoplast, SR43, GFP, and uh, nuclear marker, NLS, M. cherry, co-localized uh, nuclides. So the SR43 localized in the plastic and uh, nuclei. In this figure, kinase domain uh, contains five mutations and uh, DUF3475 and DUF668 also contain uh, three mutations, indicating um, the kinase uh, is crucial for the function, but uh, DUF also required for the Resistance. Based on a 3D model, we found uh, a high confidence HP binding site in DUF668. And uh, is here. Sorry. Uh, here, uh, the amino acid in red. So SR43 is predicted to encode uh, protein kinase. So we want to check the activity of this protein. Um, figure A shows uh, our experimental stats setups. Briefly, we expressed SR43 in E. coli, then we purified the SR43 protein and use this protein to catalyze the phosphorylation on the mold binding protein, MBP, and we separate the Phosphorylated MBP uh, with STS pages, and then do the partial digestion in gel, and then we analyzed uh, L with LC and the MS. And the figure B shows the spectra uh, for the two reactions, and the left panel shows the reac shows the um, spectra for the reaction with MBP alone, and the right panels uh, show the spectra for the reaction MBP plus 
SR43 kinase. So as you can see, um, the ninth amino acid, uh, serine, uh, is phosphor was phosphorylated, and which is uh, number 74 amino acids uh, of the MBP. Among uh, 300 or so cloned uh, plant disease regime, 15 of them are coded uh, kinase fused to another kinase or another pseudo kinase or NLR or other kind of domains. RPG1 has auto phosphorylation activity and SR43 uh, is active on uh, motor binding protein. So this prompts us to think hard about the mechanism of these 15 genes, and we turn our attention to the NLR mechanism. In 1988, uh, when the Beeson and Jones uh, proposed a uh, GAD model, in this model, effector from pathogen interact with GAD -E, and in the presence of an ANR, uh, the interaction results in resistance. And in 2008, when the home and the common proposed a decoy model, in the decoy model, effector protein interact with the decoy. In the presence of the ANR, uh, the interaction results uh, in the resistance. More recently, in 2014, the survey proposed uh, integrate decoy model. In this model, two NAR pair together, uh, one act as a receptor NAR, and with the integrated decoy domain interacting with the uh, effector, the other act as a sig signaling NAR. Um, the interaction uh, results in resistance. So by knowledge to this uh, integrated model, we proposed the integrated decoy model for kind of fusion protein. In this model, kind of fusion protein paired with uh, NLR effector interacts with the decoy uh, domain of the kind of fusion protein and which activates uh, the phosphorylation on effector or uh, the kind of fusion protein or uh, NLR and which causes uh, a confirmation change and uh, triggers the signal transduction and uh, immunity response. So in summary, we have cloned SR43 and the SR43 confers broad spectrum stimulus resistance and SR43 encodes uh, an, an unusual protein kinase. And we proposed a uh, kinase fusion protein integrated decay model. At this point, I would like to thank uh, uh, our my uh, former and current uh, colleagues, and thank Bryce Lab for the M M2 population um, screen and uh, transgenic phenotyping, and thank Yalov Lab for the chromosome flow sorting. Thank GSC Lab for the uh, GBS, and uh, thank Halbert Lab for the kinase activity analysis, and thank Lucas Lab for the 3D modeling. Thank Eclam Lab for the localization analysis, and thank uh, Wind Lab for the uh, transformation, and thank Marin and uh, Mashu for the transgenic phenotyping. And I also would like to thank BBSRC, uh, Two Blades, John In Center and King Abdullah University of Science and Technology for the funding. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you for two great, very great presentations. Um, we are getting some questions in, and just a reminder, please do your questions, put them into the Q&A panel. Even if we don't get to them today, there's a possibility that our presenters will respond in writing, and then we'll add those to our um, YouTube channel and just uh, don't hesitate to put any question in. Okay, the first question that we have uh, is why the TCLR9 was assembled with low coverage, uh, 11, I believe, 11, 11X. 
coverage. I think that's for you, Yajun. Uh, you mean the, the the coverage, the coverage for the assembly? Yes. It was lower coverage, I think. Uh, than yeah, we, yeah, the coverage, uh, uh, because uh, of, of course the, the bread weight has a, um, uh, it's a hydroploid with a, uh, it's a much bigger genome that uh, deployed the easy log in Violata. So we are not, uh, so we are not aimed to have this uh, chromosome level of these uh, assemblies. So our purpose is just to find out uh, the introgressions. So, so, so we just uh, use the lower coverage, maybe for the ha ha for the for the bread weight, um, but for the deployed uh, easy log, uh, since the genome is much smaller, so we use the more data, so there was more, there was more coverage, yeah. So just to maybe uh, query that a little bit deeper, um, just, just from a logical standpoint, would you not have increased the coverage on the larger genome, even though, you know, obviously it means a, a lot more data and more difficult yeah. to de deconvolute? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just, yeah. Anyway, just kind of curious about that. All right, so let's go on to the next question. If, if, unless you want to say something, Aju. No. Sorry? Okay, let's go on to the next question. Um, okay. Is the identified ATP binding site in SR43 uh, based on structural homology match, or was it confirmed in vitro? No, this is just predicted uh, based on the 3D model. Although the blast, uh, you don't see the, um, this uh, feature, but uh, based on 3D model, uh, we found uh, this uh, um, high confidence HB binding kind of pocket. So. Um, Yeah, it's uh, in kind of uh, DUF668, which we call the domain of unknown function. Yeah. yeah. But uh, based on 3D model, uh, we did see the, uh, it's the high confidence HP binding uh, pocket. All right, so how can these findings be utilized in the cloning of ABR SR43? Um, you mean the ATP pocket? Yes, or... I believe so. Um, we actually we don't know um, it's active um, or not. So uh, yes, the, um, based on three model, but. Uh, um, the homology is uh, in the, um, I mean, uh, based on just the sequence, the homo homology is not very high. So um, I don't know if we can use for the um, reading or, or uh, the kinase uh, applications. But uh, for the um, kinase domain, we have um, confirmed it has uh, kinase activities. So we can definitely use uh, the ASR43 uh, to do the mechanism uh, study uh, at the biochemical level. Oh. So is it possible to use the emerging pan genome of chromosome scale assemblies to prospect for kinase, pseudokinase? Pair variation. Um, we checked our kinase at the beginning with uh, the alpha 
cabbage, um, there's a um, kinase, it's a very um, old one are found in the animals, in humans. So we compared uh, with that, and uh, there's a nine key amino uh, acids, and uh, we found eight of them are conservative com uh, com uh, in ASA43. That's why I predict this uh, has activity, uh, kinase activities. And later on, uh, we verified uh, with the um, biochemical reaction uh, to uh, which means we use a uh, ASA43 protein, purified protein, to catalyze uh, the phosphorylation uh, on the motor binding protein, which is a commercial substrate. So yeah. we verified that. All right, so how was the tandem kinase fusion protein discovered and characterized? Uh, yeah, the tandem kinase fusion protein, uh, it was cloned from this uh, uh, and by this uh, transcriptome sequencing. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, to characterize, uh, I think uh, I, we used a uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, different method. So we used uh, a large scale of uh, mutagenesis because uh, it, it's, it's uh, also the uh, advantage of the weight because weight you can go, get really high uh, EMS mutant uh, rate uh, and uh, it's relatively easy to find uh, the EMS mutants. So at, and, and we screened, uh, uh, for example, more than three eight thousand M2 families and found 121 mutants. And this mute, most of uh, almost all the mutant has. Uh, uh, mutations in this uh, R9 uh, gene, and this uh, this this amino acids, especially this amino acid substitutions, can be used uh, to to we use them to to we integrate them to the uh, 3, 3D structure of this kinase, tandem kinase, and uh, we use this method to just uh, it's not a validation, that, but the predicts and the the putative function of this uh, tandem kinase genes. However, uh, we to further validate this uh, uh, this prediction, we still need probably in future some uh, experiments to confirm their the this uh, putative functions. Yeah, yeah. So you know the question was raised regarding breeding generally, and I mean, how do you see? Uh, how do you see this being integrated by breeders? Yeah, I think R9 was uh, quite often, quite uh, frequently used in, in the breeding. And uh, and uh, indeed, it, it is uh, still effective. Uh, however, however, there's still some kind of uh, virulent isolate, uh, especially in US. But this gene, I think, uh, since this R9 haven't been used for example in, in Europe, uh, in Australia or China, so there are very few uh, and isolates reported. So I think uh, this R9 could be still uh, used uh, in different regions uh, for in the future for the breeding. All right. So the next question is um, whether overexpression of SR43 or LR9 can induce cell death in N. benthamini, Miana. Sorry about the pronunciation there. Yeah, yeah I will answer first. Maybe I, I did some ex experiment for, of uh, overexpression, uh, but there was no, no cell death. So, so I tried to overexpress four lungs. I also tried the uh, 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 the kinase one, kinase two, and the kinase two plus K VWA domain. I think no of them shows the uh, uh, cell death. That is for R9. For SR43, um, we just did the regular um, expression. I mean the localization. Um, we haven't done the over 
ex uh, expression yet. So we don't know if it can cause the cell death in Quinta Miana. Right. So um, why was the why do you think the SR43 was localized to the chloroplast? Uh, plus two, because uh, um, the SR43 GIFP um, and the uh, uh, plastid marker um, co-localized together um, in plastids. So that's why uh, we think uh, it is co-localized in plastids. I mean, right, so it's actually localized in plastids. Yeah, so I um, just a, a quick final question. We're going to run over just a little bit, but that since we got delayed in the beginning, I think that's OK. Um, so I'm curious as to what your next steps are in evaluating the both aspects. Uh, next. Yeah, for, for R9, I think it's quite interesting. Uh, especially if when you combine this, uh, we, will, we will see this uh, R9 and the PM57, they are oscillog genes and they, they have the same domain structure, but uh, they confer uh, resistance to different pathogens. It will be, it will be very interesting to find out uh, how this, uh, how, what is the mechanism behind this. Yeah, I think this for R9. Thank you. For SR43, and because uh, it's uh, temperature sensitive and also risk specific, uh, has a risk specificity. So we can um, follow this to, to um, study its mechanism uh, this in response into the wind factor, like temperature and to the different um, pathogen, a different isolate. And another thing is um, in our model, um, we kind of uh, think about uh, the kinase fusion protein paired with the NAOR. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I heard a distorted voice. Um, okay. Um, so, um, although we uh, identify the uh, identified the uh, SR forty um, three in all class all eight mutants, but uh, um, we think um, we still can find the NLR. Um, although it's a little bit tough because uh, in this case, probably not just one AOR involved. It must be um, several um, in there. In there. <laughs> so um, that is another direction we can go forward. And actually, we are doing uh, experiment, experiment um, for this, um, for the, for, for the uh, NAOR. And the, uh, interaction uh, with uh, AVR protein. All right, so the last question I'll ask is, as you look at your your next projects, are there genomic resources that you think need to be developed or tools that need to be developed that would enable you to more rapidly address your research questions? Uh, yeah, I think uh, this uh, genomic resources uh, uh, from the wild relatives uh, of bread weight is could be very useful uh, because uh, before you know there are forty percent of this uh, uh, disease resistant genes were introduced from this uh, uh, wild relatives or cultivated relatives. Uh, this, the cloning of these genes uh, before it will be difficult because uh, the surprise of the recombinations. Uh, but now we have, we have developed this kind of new uh, methods, new gene cloning methods, 
which has uh, limited, uh, which has lived the limitations. Uh, so I think in future with this uh, new uh, method and uh, with and with uh, with this uh, new uh, and we can start to work on this uh, new this, this work on this uh, dynamic resources which which uh, cannot be accessed before. Yeah, I think now it's a good opportunity to work on this. Yeah, so we are getting higher quality reference sequences now of some of the wild relatives. So hopefully that will, you know, be useful. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Gotai? Yes. Um, yes, I think uh, the genomic um, resource uh, of the wild species will be very helpful to identify or clone the this uh, this gene or um, uh, abiotic uh, stress resistant gene, and um, so uh, also. Um, it's very helpful, particularly uh, if we want to um, use this resource in the uh, breeding program. And uh, just like uh, SR43 uh, was interest from a wild species, um, but uh, when um, Stevens lab in USDA, uh, we tried to add markers to engineering uh, the um, the SR43 um, chromosome segment, try to reduce uh, the size of segment, but because the uh, um, so wild species, um, it's extremely challenging to develop marker, which is uh, uh, required to shortening the um, alien chromosome or the wild species chromosome segment. Now we have a clone gene and the marker can be developed from the gene itself. So in the city, um, with the Chinese, Chinese spring uh, PH1 mutant, uh, we can further um, reduce the size of the uh, SR43 currents located um, elongated chromosome segment. Um, right now it's uh, about 10%. And uh, I believe the lab, Stevens lab, is uh, still trying to reduce uh, more. Um, but with the, um, the marker developed from the SR43 gene, and uh, uh, with the help of the Chinese spring PH1 mutant, uh, I think uh, they can do uh, the, uh, the segment in silly can be reduced just to the gene uh, size which means much, much so. Then you don't have the uh, risk of the linking drag. So, right, so right. what? Yeah. No, go ahead then. I'm just agreeing. So the, yeah, the, the, uh, so the uh, wild, uh, the genomic resource uh, of the wild species um, will help uh, this kind of uh, practical uh, breeding so um, let's say if SR43 is shortened to just a single gene, then probably uh, you can use it for uh, the breeding and it can be used in the new cultivar. Um, if the uh, many integration line right now have the have very large uh, alien chromosome segment and which can cause a huge linkage drag and they cannot be directly used breeding program. So um, geneticists and uh, some breeders are still trying to reduce the alien segment. With uh, um, the genomic resource uh, of the wild species, I think they will help them greatly to do that, to do that work, uh, engineering the chromosome, wild chromosome, uh, wild species chromosome, to very um, kind of a uh, small size, and then they can use that uh, interest gene for the uh, new varieties. Great. 
Well, thank you both very much. And thank you for dealing with some technical issues that we had and uh, hopefully everything got recorded well. Uh, so just again, to remind everyone, the presentations uh, are available in the handouts that you can also see the entire recorded uh, webinar on YouTube, our YouTube channel. It takes about a, about a day or late afternoon for that to be on the YouTube channel. But again, we want to thank you very much and I look forward to seeing you at our next webinar in December.